What occurs when the supposedly unsinkable meets its demise? It transforms into a tale that echoes through the ages, much like the tragic saga of the grand RMS Titanic. The ship, deemed unsinkable, now lies on the icy floor of the Atlantic, with over 1,500 lives lost to the cruel irony of fate. Yet, persistent rumors suggest the presence of a cursed ancient mummy smuggled aboard, bringing doom to all aboard that ill-fated night. Renowned podcaster Joe Rogan appears to have unearthed the truth behind this mystery. Was the sinking a mere accident, or was it orchestrated by malevolent forces? Did the mummy's curse seal the fate of the Titanic and its passengers? Join us in this video as we unveil the chilling secret Joe Rogan uncovered from the Titanic survivor before her passing. The tragedy of the unsinkable the RMS Titanic, a majestic British passenger liner, is etched in maritime history as a symbol of tragedy and loss. Its catastrophic sinking during its inaugural voyage in April 1912 has captivated the world, serving as a poignant reminder of the dangers of oceanic travel. Launched amidst great fanfare, the Titanic was hailed as a feat of engineering and luxury, proudly boasting the title of the largest and most opulent ship of its time. Constructed by the skilled hands of the Harland and Wolf shipyard in Belfast, it was intended to offer an unparalleled voyage experience across the Atlantic, with lavish amenities and unrivaled comfort. However, fate had a different plan for the Titanic on that fateful night of April 14, 1912, when the ship, carrying over 2,200 passengers and crew, collided with an iceberg in the icy waters of the North Atlantic, some 400 miles from Newfoundland. Despite receiving warnings of icebergs in the area, the Titanic continued at high speed, driven by a combination of competitive pressure and unwavering confidence in its unsinkable design. In the early hours of April 15, 1912, tragedy struck as the Titanic succumbed to the frigid waters of the North Atlantic. The maiden voyage, from Southampton to New York City, ended in an unforeseen and devastating disaster. This magnificent ship, representing the pinnacle of oceanic luxury and splendor, carried approximately 2,224 individuals as she gracefully navigated the icy waters under the moonlit sky. It was a tranquil Sunday evening when fate intervened harshly. Around 11.40 p.m., the Titanic's towering structure collided with an iceberg, shattering the peacefulness of the night. In the ensuing confusion and despair, time seemed to stretch endlessly as the ship's destiny hung in the balance. With each passing moment, the Titanic's battle against the unforgiving elements grew more intense. Two hours and forty minutes passed like an eternity, marked by frantic attempts to save lives amid the encroaching darkness. Despite the courageous efforts of both crew and passengers, the inevitable descent into the frigid depths began. At 2.20 a.m., the once majestic vessel yielded to the relentless embrace of the ocean, her bow slipping beneath the waves with solemn finality. In the aftermath of this harrowing ordeal, more than 1,500 souls perished, leaving behind a haunting legacy of grief and loss. The collision proved catastrophic, fatally compromising the ship's hull and breaching multiple compartments. Despite being touted as unsinkable due to its innovative design featuring watertight compartments, the Titanic started to succumb to the icy waters. Efforts to evacuate passengers into lifeboats were hindered by the insufficient number available, plunging the vessel into a state of panic and chaos as it sank into the unforgiving depths. In the somber early hours of April 15, 1912, the Titanic's stern dramatically rose as the ship broke apart and sank beneath the waves, claiming the lives of approximately 1,900 passengers and crew. It remains one of the deadliest commercial peacetime maritime disasters in history, a stark reminder of the fragility of human endeavors in the face of nature's power. However, from the tragedy emerged a renewed commitment to maritime safety. The sinking of the Titanic spurred significant changes to safety regulations, leading to the establishment of the International Ice Patrol and the implementation of stricter standards regarding the provision of lifeboats on ships. It highlighted the crucial importance of effective communication systems and emergency procedures at sea, ensuring that the legacy of those lost aboard the Titanic would forever serve as a guiding light towards safer waters. The ship that was believed to be unsinkable proved its creators wrong with a tragic end that April night, lost to the icy depths until recently. What fate befell the sunken ship? Is it forever cloaked in darkness, lost to the depths? Will we ever glimpse this underwater graveyard of opulence and lost lives?
Let us uncover the truth. Discovering the legendary wreck for years, the Titanic's wreckage lay. Hidden beneath over 12,000 feet of oceanic abyss, a mystery shrouded in silence. It appeared as though the once mighty vessel, believed to be unsinkable, had descended into the depths, taking with it the secrets of its final hours. However, in 1985, a bold joint American-French expedition, led by the fearless Dr. Robert Ballard, shattered this veil of mystery. Off the coast of Newfoundland, they revealed the titanic solemn resting place, a poignant reminder of the tragedy that befell her. In the 73 years since its tragic maiden voyage, numerous attempts have been made to locate the Titanic. Each ending in disappointment. Ballard's mission was veiled in secrecy, born from a covert partnership with the U.S. Navy, motivated not only by historical intrigue but by a mission steeped in military secrecy. His journey, veiled in shadows, began with the solemn task of surveying the wrecks of lost submarines, a precursor to the clandestine search for the iconic deep-sea vessel. With painstaking precision, the expedition documented the wreckage, capturing poignant glimpses of a bygone era preserved in the cold depths. Among the debris lay remnants of its former grandeur, a poignant contrast to the somber reality of lives lost beneath the waves. For Ballard and his team, the discovery was both triumph and elegy, a bittersweet reminder of humanity's unending quest for knowledge and understanding in the face of profound tragedy. As they beheld the remnants of a bygone era, they carried the weight of history, a solemn pledge to honor the memory of those who had perished beneath the waves, forever intertwined with the legend of the Titanic. Since that fateful discovery, numerous expeditions have sought to unravel the mysteries held within the Titanic's silent embrace. These journeys into the abyss have yielded a wealth of artifacts and insights, illuminating the conditions of the wreck site and contributing to ongoing research and preservation efforts. Yet, amidst the reverence of historical inquiry, whispers of conspiracy lurk in the depths. While official accounts attribute the Titanic's demise to a collision with an iceberg, a chorus of alternate theories reverberates through the corridors of speculation. Deception on the high seas one enduring and unfounded tale about the Titanic revolves around its insurance arrangements. According to some accounts, the Titanic sinking was a fraudulent insurance scheme orchestrated by its owners. The White Star Line, to claim insurance money from the extensive policies held on the ship. The theory suggests that the ship deliberately struck an iceberg to facilitate an insurance claim for the loss of the vessel. Despite its reputation as unsinkable, this narrative has gained traction, particularly due to the fact that the company's owner survived. The ship sinking aboard a lifeboat. Some survivors claim to have seen tags on the Titanic's dishes and furniture that belonged to another ship. Today, we'll explore the most plausible explanations for the ship sinking, based on accounts from survivors. One of the most contentious and complex theories regarding the Titanic was introduced by Robin Gardner. In his book Titanic, the ship that never sank. Gardner proposes the notion of a switch between the Titanic and its sister ship, the RMS Olympic, suggesting that it was the Olympic, not the Titanic, that sank. In his book, Gardner outlines several incidents and coincidences leading up to the Titanic's demise. He suggests that the ship that sank was actually the Titanic's sister ship, the Olympic, disguised. As the Titanic as part of an insurance scheme orchestrated by its owners, the International Mercantile Marine Group, headed by American financier J.P. Morgan, who acquired the White Star Line in 1902. The Olympic, launched in October 1910, was slightly older than the Titanic but was built around the same time and bore a striking resemblance to its more famous counterpart, except for minor details like the arrangement of windows on the front decks, the spacing of windows on the B decks, and a section of the Titanic's front deck that had been closed off a few weeks before its ill-fated maiden voyage. Both ships were outfitted with linoleum floors, but shortly before its departure, J. A. Bruce's May, the White Star Line's managing director, inexplicably requested that the Titanic's floors be carpeted instead. 
On September 20, 1911, the Olympic collided with the Royal Navy ship HMS Hawk in the Brambles Channel in Southampton Water while under the guidance of a harbour pilot. The proximity of the two vessels caused the Olympic to strike the Hawk's starboard side, resulting in significant damage to the liner both above and below the waterline. Despite eyewitness accounts to the contrary, an inquiry concluded that the Olympic was at fault. This incident lends credence to Gardner's theory. Gardner contends that the collision compromised crucial components of the Olympic, causing a persistent list to one side. As a result, the insurance company Lloyds of London allegedly refused to cover the damages. Furthermore, the company's flagship would be out of commission while undergoing repairs, potentially delaying. The completion of the Titanic, which was already behind schedule due to the Olympics' return to the shipyard after losing one of its propellers. Collectively, these factors would have represented a significant financial setback for the company. Gardner posits that, to ensure the continued operation of at least one ship, the extensively damaged Olympic was repaired and made to resemble the Titanic. When the actual Titanic was completed, it would assume the identity of the Olympic. Indeed, the Titanic exhibited a slight list to one side when it departed from Southampton. Improper loading of cargo and fuel tanks could have contributed to the Titanic sinking, suggesting incompetence among the crew on several occasions. Many survivors, including Lawrence Beasley and Norman Chambers, observed the Titanic tilting to one side, indicating a list. Beasley recounted, I then told everyone at our table about how the Titanic was leaning to one side. I had seen it before, and we watched the sky through the windows as we sat in the dining room. Chambers recalled, but then the ship leaned a little to the other side, and maybe a few degrees downwards, and since the ship had been leaning to one side almost all afternoon, I chose to stay up. Gardner notes that few parts of either ship were labelled with their names, except for easily removable items like lifeboats, compasses, and nameplates. Most other components were standard items used by the White Star Line that could be used interchangeably among ships. Unlike other White Star Line ships, which had their names carved into their sides, the Titanic had its name affixed with rivets. Recent photographs of the wreck show two plates with the Titanic's name missing, revealing the letters M and P on the ship's side. Gardner proposes that the plan was to dispose of the supposedly irreparable Olympic in a way that would allow White Star to claim the full insurance value of the new ship. He suggests that they would open the ship's valves at sea to slowly flood it while ensuring nearby ships could rescue the passengers. Gardner points to the duration of the Titanic sea trials as evidence, noting that while the Olympics trials in 1910 lasted two days with some high-speed runs, the Titanic's trials lasted only one day and did not exceed half speed. He suggests that this was because the repaired hull could not withstand prolonged high speeds. Gardner derives that First Officer Murdoch, who was not officially on duty yet on April 14, was on the bridge because he was aware of the plan and was looking out for the rescue ships. One of Gardner's most controversial ideas is that the Titanic did not hit an iceberg, but collided with a stationary rescue ship from the same company, which had its lights off. He argues that the supposed iceberg was seen so close to the Titanic because it was actually a darkened ship, and he doubts that an iceberg could cause such extensive damage to a steel vessel like the Titanic. Gardner also claims that the ship struck by the Titanic was the same one seen by the Californian firing distress rockets, which, he believes, explains why the Californian did not respond, a decision often criticized as failing to aid the Titanic after seeing its distress signals. Regarding the ice on the Titanic's deck, Gardner suggests it came from both the Titanic and the other ship it collided with. As for the real Titanic, Gardner asserts that it operated for 25 years as the Olympic and was dismantled in 1935. According to Gardner, the intention was not to harm anyone aboard the ship. If everything had gone according to plan, the ship would have sunk slowly, allowing another vessel to rescue the crew and passengers. So what went wrong? Gardner theorized that the liner accidentally struck a darkened rescue ship, which those on board later mistook for an iceberg. This theory has gained traction over the years due to the peculiarities of the Titanic's voyage and its sister ships, as well as survivor accounts that seem to support this idea. Murray and his companion, journalist William Steed, found themselves ensnared by the mummy's curse. 
their lives claimed by the unforgiving sea aboard the ill-fated Titanic. Steed, an adventurer on a quest for history, unknowingly shared the tale of the cursed artifact with fellow travelers, oblivious to the fate that awaited him at the hands of its malevolent influence. Rumor circulated about the British Museum's attempt to rid itself of the cursed relic by selling it to an American museum. As the Titanic met its icy demise, speculation arose, was it mere chance that sealed the ship's fate, or did the mummy's curse steer it towards destruction? As time marches on, one question lingers, amidst the turmoil of that tragic night, did the cursed mummy, with its ancient whispers of calamity, wield control over the Titanic's tragic end? In a realm where reality intertwines with legend, only the depths of the ocean hold the secrets of that samba and tragic voyage. A dream that founded in the chronicles of maritime history, few narratives captivate and sadden as profoundly as that of the Titanic. This opulent British passenger liner, launched with great celebration and expectation, embarked on its inaugural journey on April 10, 1912. Setting off from Southampton, England, and bound for the vibrant cityscape of New York City, the Titanic epitomized modern engineering, a testament to human ambition and technological advancement. Stretching approximately 882.5 feet in length and weighing over 52,000 tons when fully laden, the Titanic ranked among the largest and most luxurious ships ever crafted. Crafted to rival the extravagant standards set by its competitors, the Titanic featured a plethora of amenities promising unmatched comfort and luxury to its passengers. From its grand first-class dining saloon adorned with exquisite embellishments to its for elevators and lavish swimming pool, no expense was spared in ensuring the utmost extravagance for its esteemed travelers. Even its second-class accommodations rivaled the first-class offerings on other vessels, while its third-class accommodations, though less opulent, still provided a degree of comfort to those seeking passage across the Atlantic. However, beneath its luxurious exterior lay a promise of safety, or so it was believed. The Titanic boasted 16 watertight compartments, each equipped with doors that could be sealed from the bridge to contain any flooding in the event of a breach in the hull. The ship's designers proclaimed it to be unsinkable, capable of withstanding the flooding of up to four compartments without compromising its buoyancy. On April 10, 1912, amid great pomp and circumstance, the Titanic embarked on its maiden voyage, aptly dubbed the Millionaire's Special. Captain Edward J. E. Smith, esteemed for his popularity among affluent passengers, commanded the grand vessel as it embarked on its voyage across the expansive North Atlantic. Nonetheless, the journey was fraught with ominous signs. Shortly after setting sail, the Titanic narrowly avoided a collision when the suction from its massive hull caused the nearby New York to veer into its path. Despite this near miss, the Titanic continued its journey, making brief stops at Cherbourg, France, and Queenstown, Cobb, Ireland, to embark additional passengers before setting course for New York City. Throughout the voyage, the ship's wireless radio operators, Jack Phillips and Harold Bride, diligently transmitted messages and received iceberg warnings, a common occurrence in the icy waters of the North Atlantic. However, despite these warnings, the Titanic maintained its speed of approximately 22 knots as it ventured into an area known to be frequented by icebergs. At around 11.40 p.m., lookout Frederick Fleet spotted an iceberg looming ahead, a silent sentinel in the darkness. Despite frantic attempts to change course and reverse engines, the Titanic could not evade the collision, and its starboard side grazed the icy behemoth. The impact breached at least five of the supposedly watertight compartments, sealing the ship's fate. As water poured into the bow, Thomas Andrews, the ship's designer, realized the inevitable truth, the Titanic was destined to sink. Despite courageous efforts to launch the lifeboats and send distress signals, the enormity of the disaster quickly became apparent. As the Titanic began to list and eventually break apart, pandemonium erupted among the passengers and crew. With inadequate lifeboats and confusion prevailing, many were faced with a grim choice. Fight for survival or succumb to the icy clutches of the Atlantic. In the early hours of April 15, 1912, as the Titanic slipped beneath the waves, the full extent of the tragedy unfolded. More than 1,500 lives were lost in the freezing waters, their aspirations and dreams vanishing amidst the wreckage of the once mighty vessel. The aftermath of the Titanic disaster echoed around the world, prompting inquiries and investigations into its causes and consequences. 
From the valor of those who perished to the failures of those who survived, the Titanic's tale remains a poignant reminder of humanity's frailty in the face of nature's fury. As time has passed, the Titanic has transcended its identity as a mere ship, evolving into a symbol of human ambition and the relentless might of the sea. From the depths of the ocean floor, where its corroded remains rest, to the myriad books, films, and museums commemorating its legacy, the Titanic endures as a testament to the triumphs and tragedies of the human spirit. Thank you for watching Worldview Theory. Explore another captivating video by clicking the link on your screen now. See you on the other side.